In the 18th century, Habsburg rulers sought to apply a unified and centralized set of institutions to the collection of diverse territories over which they ruled, many of which functioned largely according to their own particular laws, institutions, and administrative traditions. Centralization and unification of the new empire were critical to project great power status and effectively withstand the military attacks of its many enemies. At the same time, however, this Habsburg state, like other developing states in Europe, had to be capable of inspiring an emotional attachment among its peoples by encouraging them to link their individual or group interests to imperial interests. The book opens by describing and analyzing a broad range of administrative and institutional experiments inaugurated by 18th century monarchs Maria Theresa and her sons Joseph II and Leopold II, from diminishing the forced labor burdens on the peasantry to taxing the nobility. These measures elicited strong support for empire from peasants in several regions of the empire. Later chapters turn to subsequent state-building maneuvers carried out by their imperial successors. Liberal absolutism in the 1850s, constitutional experiments in 1848 and the 1860s, the dualist settlement of 1867, experiments with other so-called national settlements after 1900, universal manhood suffrage in the Austrian half of the monarchy in 1907, federalization in October 1918, and the adoption by successor states of some Habsburg laws and practices in 1919 and 1920. Each of these landmarks in Habsburg history is well known, and with only one real exception, the book follows a fairly conventional periodization. What is different here is how I explain those landmark moments, where I locate causal factors, and above all, how they engage, and are even often produced by, initiatives and support from society. In each of these familiar historical periods, the Habsburgs continued their efforts to forge a unified empire with a unified purpose. They did so, however, in ways that demonstrated remarkable creativity and flexibility in practice, while rhetorically maintaining that the power of their empire remained unchanged and unbroken. Imperial state-building took place under, and necessarily responded to, radically changing local empire and European-wide conditions, which demanded nimble strategies, dependent upon the support of different allies in society.